A lot of what I was um, covering has already been touched on, so it's probably a bit of a, a recap in some ways and, and um, re-emphasising some of the points. Um, so we do get contacted by um, a lot of organisation administrators in the national office on a daily basis uh, regarding issues to do with HICAP. And one of the things that we hear a lot from organisation administrators is that there's just not enough hours in the day um, to manage the auditing requirements of the hand hygiene program. So what I want to do is, is look at a bit more detail in, and break down how time's being spent. And to throw the question back, what is it that you're busy doing? And is there time that could be saved? So the National Hand Hygiene Initiative sets out the number of moments for each organisation based on bed number and procedures per annum. So a three to 400 uh, bed facility will collect 2,100 moments per audit period. Small day facility will collect 100 moments per audit period. And as we know, there's three audit periods per year. So the purpose of collecting the data is to use it as to guide the hand hygiene program as a whole. Remembering that auditing is just one component of what should be a multimodal program. The end point being culture change and improved hand hygiene compliance. As Kate touched on, the departments, um, the recommendations have recently changed. Um, what constitutes an eligible department and um, how much you need to collect for each eligible department. So um, eligible departments now include uh, emergency, radiology, um, and others that you've previously collected for. High risk departments like critical care no longer need to collect 350 for, per audit period. Now with the recommendations, they only need to collect one to 200 uh, moments per year. So this gives greater flexibility to organisations to direct their auditing efforts where they feel they are needed and ensures that all eligible departments are included at least once a year. So looking more closely at the data collection and what's really happening. So this is um, data collected. So on this table you can see the number of moments that we recommend by jurisdiction and then how much data is being collected above and this is something that Lindsay um, showed you as well. So nationally for, or for one audit period there's an extra 228,459 moments above what we recommend. So while a larger data set is great for reliability of the data, it's also, it also comes at a cost, and that is the time that it takes to collect it. So our assumption is that it takes two minutes to collect one moment. And based on this, we can see that the time taken to collect all this extra data is quite significant. The third last column is the number of hours to collect um, the extra data and the last column is the number of eight hour shifts required to collect the additional data. So nationally for Audit 2 2017 there was 952 eight hour shifts worth of time uh, taken to collect this extra data. Now we know that not all auditors are provided with dedicated auditing time which essentially means that some auditing is being done whilst looking after patients. So the question then becomes, is patient care being compromised by collecting all of this additional data? So having just looked at the volume of data collected, I now want to look at um, en data entry into HICAP. If the data was collected using paper forms, then it needs to be entered via a PC. If it was collected on a mobile device, then all that's required is to push the sync button and you're done. The data is insta entered instantly. <coughs> For those who haven't tried HICAP Mobile, there is a, a practice login and these are the details for the practice login. So if you haven't done it before, take these down and give it a go and you can have a go at entering, seeing how easy it is. This is just a, a practice login, it's not what you would use if you were um, going to use HICAP for real. So I'll put that up again at the end if you want to um, get the details down. 
And again, just a, a screenshot of a mobile device with the data entry page. It's very easy to click through. There's a login page there, a screenshot of that, and also screenshots of um, entering the demographics for each session. <coughs> and finally, um, the screenshot of syncing the data. So once you've pushed that sync button, it says it's done, it's in the database, and you can uh, run reports on that straight away. So the alternative for those who don't use Hiccup Mobile is um, lots and lots of paper and those who are doing that will um, probably sympathise uh, with that. So the question um, then is, how does the data go in? So this is what we know from um, running uh, the, the line data that we can do. We can see how much data goes in uh, with manual data entry. So the dark blue lines is the manual data entry for each jurisdiction, the light blue is um, the, the data that goes in uh, with the, uh, the app and um, the orange is a small amount that comes in via an external spreadsheet, so very little of that. But as you can see, uh, for every jurisdiction apart from Northern Territory, um, the majority of data is being put in manually. So if we're going to look at how much data is going in manually, we also need to look at the time that it takes to put that data in. So we can see, just looking at that one audit period, um, audit 2, 2017, in terms of um, the number of hours that uh, it takes to, to manually enter that data, that's 2,234 hours nationally. Um, and in terms of eight hour shifts, it's 279 eight hour shifts. Extrapolating that to or looking at the, the entire year, that's 832 eight hour shifts of data, of um, time that it takes to enter that data. So again, for the poor people who've got to do that data entry, um, that's, a, that's a heck of a lot of typing. So who gets the job of entering this data? Um, we can see from the list there, and we know this from review visits that we've done, organisation administrators, sometimes region administrators are entering data. Infection control teams, clerical assistants, auditors. Um, so we know also that there are sometimes infection control managers who are sitting there spending time entering data and it's time they would no doubt rather be doing other things. So what are the barriers um, to using Hiccup Mobile? So we know it will save time. So why aren't auditors using it? In our review visits, uh, we've asked this question and there is, these are some of the responses. Limited access to mobile devices, internet connectivity issues, auditors not allowed to use mobile devices, some auditors not confident with mobile devices, paper <coughs> easier with a clinical load, um, some org admins don't encourage it and prefer, um, and they prefer to personally review the paper sheets for auditing errors. So what we also know is that the uptake of, of technology is not always straightforward. So Venkatesh and team put together this model, which they have named the Unified Theory of Acceptance and Use of Technology, to look at the different factors that impact on a user's intention to use the technology. For example, factors such as age and gender or prior experience with the technology can influence how much effort a user expects the technology to be. So if some resistance is encountered, it may be worth reviewing these factors and developing different strategies depending on where the resistance is coming from. So now I want to look at the combination of excess data collection and manual data entry and the impact it has on time. So the orange bars show how much time we expect auditing should take. So that again is in eight hour shifts. Um, and that's, that's assuming that only the recommended amount was collected and it was all collected using Hiccup Mobile. In comparison, the darker blue shows the time taken to collect all of the data that was collected for Audit 2 2017, that is the recommended amount, and the data collected above the recommendations. In the light blue part of the column is the time required to manually 
enter the data from a paper form. Data that could have been entered using HICAP Mobile. As you can see, the time savings are huge. So nationally, for Audit 2 2017, there was a potential to save 1,387 eight-hour shifts of time. What else could be done with this time? For auditors who are auditing during their shift with a clinical load, this is time that can potentially go back to looking after patients. For auditors who, ha who have dedicated auditing time, the time the time saved could go towards a number of other activities, such as education or promotion. And for organisation administrators who are spending valuable hours entering data, the time could be used in a variety of ways, such as engaging the executive in, a, in the program to provide resources for education. Time could also be used to manage and support the auditors, ensuring auditors receive refresher sessions and are all currently valid. So once the data is in the database, next comes the reports. So many um, ICPs have told us that hours are spent putting hand hygiene compliance reports together. In an effort to support the ICPs, there are a number of reports that can be run in HICAP with the click of a button. So the department poster that was introduced last year has been incredibly popular, and it's now being expanded to be available at a range of other levels. The button will say, um, uh, poster report. It's, it currently says department poster. So if you're an organisation administrator, you'll see more filters than before and this will um, get you an organisation level poster as well as all of the department posters that you could get uh, previously. So here's what an organisation poster will look like and it will go live and be ready uh, for you to use in a couple of weeks. Similarly, if you're a region administrator, you'll be able to get a region poster as well as other levels of posters. So you can use them um, however you need to. So in the future, um, following feedback from users, uh, we will look at adding a healthcare worker type poster as that's also been something that's been requested. So I hope that looking at these three different components of auditing, uh, the auditing program, data collection, data entry and reporting, it will allow for some, for some reflection on how time is being utilised and how time could be saved. If these reports, if there are reports that you need but you're not sure how to run them, please contact us. We're happy to go through with you on the phone to see if we do have that capacity within the, um, the database. If it's something that we can't do, then we can look at adding it um, as, a, as, a, as a new feature. The latest change in HICAP I have to show you is a new feature which assists us in the national office and also would assist jurisdiction uh, coordinators so, so that we can identify who the hand hygiene lead is as some facilities um, have several organisation administrators. So primary contact can now be assigned. Um, click the edit button, click on the blue star and then click save and this way we'll know who to contact at your facility if we, if we want to get in contact with you. Um, and as I said, this is the, um, the HICAP login details again for anyone who wants to get the rest of that down. Um, and that's all. Thank you very much.